Now, the conversation, Tom, of course, is shifting when it comes to private markets as well. As big firms get even bigger, a fragile economic backdrop is actually threatening the survival of their smaller counterparts. Now, this dynamic is a key theme at Super Returns, a three-day conference, which is taking place in Berlin. And Bloomberg's Danny Berger joins us from there with a guest. Danny, take it away. And I'll be looking at Hi, you. Francine. Thank you so much. That's right. I'm joined now with Nikos Stathopoulos, who is the chairman of Europe at BC Partners. Nikos, so great to talk to you again this year. We always really look forward to this conversation. But, you know, we did talk roughly a year ago, and you said, look, I'm an optimist. Um, a lot has happened in a year. SVB, interest rates are still high. Central banks are still hiking. Are you still an optimist? Well, good morning, first of all, and thank you for having me again, Danny. Um, I'm still cautiously optimistic about the market. The market is stabilizing. Um, inflation is, seems to have picked. You see it also in the UK. You see it in Europe. Interest rates remain high, um, but hopefully they're going to stop uh, increasing. Um, I think you, you see the market stabilizing. There's no doubt that we need to um, become more cognizant of the fact that both inflation and interest rates will remain higher for longer. But apart from that, I think uh, the world is adjusting to uh, the new norm and, uh, and things are, are stabilizing. Can, but can this industry, though, adjust to that? Because there's been a lot of leverage, a lot of high valuations paid. Can everyone deal with higher for longer? I think they can. Um, when I started my career in this industry 25 years ago, it was higher inflation and it, it, we did have higher interest rates. Um, we did go through a period of, of um, 10 years or more of more probably abnormal situations with inflation at these levels and interest rates almost at zero. So I think it can adjust. It has seen that it has been proven that we can go through cycles and manage uh, investing and still making uh, good investments through different cycles. Uh, I definitely have heard comments from folks at this conference who kind of maybe are less optimistic and have just said, look, there are funds that are going to fall by the wayside. There will be consolidation in this industry, especially among smaller funds who don't have a niche. What do you think about that? I think there will be a flight to quality. I think the more experienced managers will, will come through and will shine in this, uh, in this environment. Um, I think our job has become a bit harder uh, because we do need to manage our portfolio a bit more. We need to have more active ownership in our portfolio. We need to manage our debt maturities uh, more. We need to manage businesses and focus on operations. Um, but I, I do think that uh, the more experienced managers will, um, will uh, differentiate themselves in this market. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it, it is a tough time just in terms of the macro climate, in terms of the consumer. Pronovius, of course, the uh, wedding dress company, you had to hand back the keys. So when you are dealing with these sort of things, how do you make sure you, you keep that confidence, that you instill that trust among your investors? Ultimately, it will come through to the quality of assets that we own. Um, I think the investors can see whether the portfolio is weathering the storms or not. We've been uh, fortunate, given the asset selection and also our operational focus, really, to have a portfolio which is remaining extremely resilient, mm. despite the macro that we're discussing, despite the interest rates, hikes, and everything else. And this is what investors see. Investors see how, the, how is your portfolio performing. They look at the macro environment, which is natural, but we're not macro investor, investors, we're micro investors. Mm. We buy companies, we don't buy countries, we don't buy uh, economies, and, and that's what, uh, what they focus on. So if they see the portfolio weathering the storm performing very well, they have that confidence that right. we're buying the right companies and we're making sure that they grow the right way. How, how has the more consumer-focused uh, businesses in your portfolio done? Have you seen any sort of, because this is what everyone's worried about right now, is the consumer finally going to stop spending and cave in? Have you seen any signs of that so far? We have very little um, percent of our portfolio is uh, directly consumer-focused. Mm. We have taken a deliberate view that we don't want to have uh, assets in the portfolio that have direct consumer exposure exactly because consumers have been hit. Uh, no one has been immune. It's obvious that uh, the inflation and the environment has hit also the consumer, it has hit consumer pricing. Um, so we, we haven't seen much impact because we don't have that many uh, portfolio enough. companies in uh, So that's, a, that's a conscious decision. It is a conscious decision. And it has been a conscious decision, frankly, even pro-COVID, pre-COVID, but certainly post-COVID yeah. as well. There's been a lot of excitement around sports, and maybe it's because right when this conference started, we learned that Live and PGA were going to merge, so it got everyone talking. Um, in the past, you had bid for media rights, things like Inter Milan. How do you view the opportunity set? Are you still interested in league media rights? 
sports uh, has been an industry, as we had discussed in the past, that has been one of the most disrupted. And I think it's sports is also an industry that not only growing, but it's uh, increasingly opening itself up for institutional capital. Uh, there are certain areas where institutional capital can be more uh, catered to. So um, investing in clubs, for example, I think it's more difficult for an institutional investor because there's more volatility in its cash flows and we do like predictable cash flows. So it's difficult to have predictability in, in sports. Um, but in investing in rights, it's potentially more interesting, uh, more stable. And we do think, as we look at, for example, the US sports market, that the European market will follow. And you will see that uh, that attraction in, uh, in media rights. So yes, I think it will be a very interesting space to continue to explore. How, how long will it take to get the European media rights market look more like the U.S.? Because you do see areas of pushback, the Bundesliga being a great example of voting against uh, institutionalizing that. So is this going to be a long process? Could it happen over a couple years? I think it will take a bit longer because the, the, the nature uh, of the European sports uh, market, and by the way, the fact that Europe is not just one country, whereas the U.S. is one country uh, and therefore you have that that um, uh, system that ecosystem of different countries having to manage different uh, situations different cultures different interests the clubs have their own interests so it is and that's a Bundesliga is a good example of right. things take longer right it pr probably a, a good lesson for uh, American funds who are coming in and, and trying to do this because we're afraid we're gonna have to leave it there really wonderful to talk to you uh, and with that I'll bring it back to you Tom that is Nikos Stakopoulos of PC Partners